So this is the next uh, subunit, I guess, in the topic uh, around pyridosity. Uh, the first row, D, block elements, the transition metals. Uh, these are the learning objectives for the unit. Okay, it's up to you to go through them and make sure you check, check them off as we go through. This is all now high level IB stuff. So the transition metals. So a transition element is defined as an element that possesses an incomplete D sublevel in one or more oxidation states. For example, when, well, which means basically when it's an ion. Now this therefore means that the members of group 12 here, uh, zinc, cadmium, mercury, and copernicium, are not transition metals. Because when they form ions, they lose the S orbitals, but they have these full D sub levels. Okay, you need to have incomplete D sub levels in order, when you are uh, forming ions to be considered a transition element. Additionally, transition metals have an empty D orbital, and the D orbital splits into two energy sub levels, and electrons moving between these uh, sub levels gives the the elements their properties that we will discuss uh, further on. Okay. Also note that uh, for both chromium, which is here, and for copper, which is here, it is more energetically favorable to half fill and completely fill the D uh, orbital sublevels. Um, so they only contain that one S electron. That's the reason why they don't quite follow the off bow principles, which we learned earlier. So what are these magical properties? Okay, well, Transition metals produce wonderful compounds which have pretty colours, and it also allows for something called complex iron formation, which we'll look at in a little bit more detail later. Okay, it gives them a variable oxidation number and makes them good catalysts. So when I say variable, it means that they can have a range of different oxidation states. They form a range of different ions, basically, uh, of different values of their charges. Uh, most materials are diamagnetic. Okay, when I say diamagnetic, I mean they are repelled by a magnet. Uh, but some transmission metals, some transition metals are paramagnetic. Okay, attracted to magnets. And this is of course this is well due to unpaired electrons allowing spin in one direction to allow those magnetic poles to form. And when transition metals lose electrons, they lose these four s electrons first. And all transition metals can show the oxidation of plus two because they've lost these two 4s electrons. Okay, so when I said variable oxidation states, um, it's because they uh, have relatively small differences in their successive ionization energies. Okay, so as an example, for the first and second ionization energies of sodium versus one of the transition metals, Let's uh, you consider that's a very big difference between the first and second ionization energies of sodium compared to the transition metals. Okay, and here are some common oxidation states um, from your data booklet. Okay, so for example, uh, manganese has one, two, three, four, five different oxidation states ranging from plus two to plus seven. And just going back to that previous slide discussing it. Uh, looking at the different ionization energies, so you can see for sodium the massive difference between the first and second ionization energies. Okay, it goes from about 500 to about four and a half thousand. Massive jump. Okay, whereas we look at the ionization energies for something like oh manganese, okay, it's going from about um, 700 and so about 700 to 1500. So it's doubling. Okay, so it is a big jump, but compared to sodium, which is going uh, from 400 to nearly 4,000, okay, it's like 10 times, it's a massive difference for sodium and not so much for the transition metals. And these are the corresponding electron configurations uh, for all the transition first row elements. And just pointing out the anomalies uh, being chromium and copper. So you will see that both chromium and copper have these unfilled 4s electron shells, so suborbitals here, whereas for all the others, they're all lost when they're forming ions. 
Um, so as I was discussing, one of the uh, pretty things about uh, transition metal chemistry is its pretty colours, which form when they make ions, okay, um, and the ions are complex. And when I mean complex, it means that the ions uh, consist, well, the complex ions consist of a central atom, okay, which is a transition metal, uh, which is usually the, yeah, the transition metal or ion, and it's attracted to groups or attached to groups called ligands. Okay, so here we have an example here. This is uh, silver as the, the metal atom, or in this case, ion, and the ligand in this particular example is ammonia. And you can see that uh, there is a range of different possible structures depending on the uh, metal which is central. And we'll discuss that later as the re reason why certain metals favor certain uh, sh shapes. Okay, and the coordination number is the total number of points at which the central atom or ion attaches to the lingon. Okay, so for this guy here, the silver uh, is going to be two, this guy is going to be four, this guy is going to also be four, and this guy is going to be wonderfully one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the coordination numbers for those particular ions. So why do certain uh, ions favour certain uh, shapes uh, or coordinations? Well, the region surrounding the central atom or ion that containing the ligands is called the coordination sphere. Okay, and this is how we write um, these coordination compounds. We start off with the um, metal, the central ion. We then put square brackets around uh, the entire ligands. And you've also got the two free ions floating around. So this, this actually represents uh, cobalt chloride in H3. Oh, sorry, not in H3. Yeah, H3 in the middle. In H3, 5 square bracket 2 plus, okay, from the cobalt 2 plus ion. And it's also got two Cl minuses as anions to go with the complex. Okay, so that's what actually that's what that represents. Okay, a substance consisting of one or more complexes is called a coordination compound. Okay, and that's just an example there. So the number of lone pairs bonded to the metal ion is known as the coordination number. Okay, so the coordination number of six, we'll call that shape, is called octahedral. If the coordination number is four, we call that tetrahedral or square planar, depending on whether it is a planar arrangement around the central ion or whether it is a tetrahedral arrangement. So when I say tetrahedral uh, versus square planar, so tetrahedral would be where it's kind of um, like methane, which we haven't done yet. Yes, we did an organic last year. Okay, that's tetrahedral, whereas you've got square planar would be just basically like that, flat. And two is linear. Okay, octahedral, oh, there we go, the shapes there. That's octahedral, that's tetrahedral, that's square planar, and that's your linear. Straight. Okay. Uh, and just a point, uh, square planar compounds are rare, but usually D8 configurations the strong field ligands um, usually form these. Okay, so here's some examples of coordination uh, complexes. So the um, hexacyanoiron um, complex is six coordinate. Uh, this copper tetrachloride kind of anion is um, four coordinate, and the silver diammonia complex is two coordinate. Diamino. Okay, of all these complex ions are bonded in mono, to monodentate ligands, and monodentate pretty much means that they all consist of one type of ligand. Uh, four lobes is normally tetrahedral, but with a full D8, like copper, the strong ligands have become square planar. Okay, so looking at these ligands a bit more detail, a ligand is a neutral molecule or anion, so a neutral molecule like ammonia or an anion like chloride, which contains a non-bonding pair of electrons, and these electron pairs from the ligand form a coordinate bond with the central metal ion, and it's forming the complex ions. 
And complex ions form with transition metals because the size of the D block uh, is so small and it attracts uh, species that are rich in electrons. <coughs> Looking at coordination bonds and numbers, a common ligand we see, of course, it's got a wonderful lone pair, is water. And most, but not all, transition metal ions exist as these, this hexahydrated complex iron in aqueous solution. Okay, so when you look at ion in iron in solution, okay, that, that brown uh, rusty colour, that's actually not just the free iron floating about, it's actually in coordination with six water molecules. And that, that's pretty much what hydration is. Okay, and that's the example of that there in kind of 3D or 2D planar. Okay, and the lone pair of electrons of water molecules form these coordinate bonds. Okay, so there's the coordinate bonds forming from the lone pairs. And iron is forming six bonds, so the coordination number, therefore, is six. So just to complete uh, around ligands, I'm going to show you a, a polydentate ligand. Okay, we looked at monodentate, and this is an example of a polydentate known as the EDTA. Okay, so that's the EDTA4 minus iron. You can see there are many lone pairs which can form these coordination bonds. Okay, so the full name is actually ethylene diamine tetraacetate, and it's a chelate, and that means that it's polydentate, which means it has many of these lone pairs that can form multiple complexes as it grabs onto metal um, with more than one donor atom. Okay, can kind of lock around. Uh, it has several important uses, uh, including the removal of heavy metal ions. So if you get lead poisoning, for example, in the blood, they might try EDTA, probably kill you, but there you go. Um, probably soil as well, they could try and bind up the, the, the heavy metal in the soil. Um, and also it's used to prevent uh, transmission, uh, transition metals catalyzing food rancidity going off, because a lot of these transition metals are used by bacteria um, to by like, proteases to break down food um, so by binding those transition metals those reactions can't occur so that's pretty much uh, all you need to know about the first row transition metals uh, I'm going to try and maybe find some nice pretty colors to show you as well <laughs>